This is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, it's the first in my um, Spring tutorial series, we're going to talk a bit about what Spring actually is. So this is, um, this is a Spring program here. Spring is a, it's a technology that's um, typically associated with um, developing websites, very secure backends for websites and uh, also with working with databases and it's often used in conjunction with something called Hibernate. It's also used for um, JMS, the Java messaging service, which I don't cover in this course, but probably the biggest two areas are websites and uh, database programming. So Spring is just an API, so you just download a bunch of JAR files and you use them in your program. And the idea is that you represent your Java objects by spring beans and these spring beans are um, the, the kind of entities that are configured either typically in XML or else using annotations and they represent your Java objects and spring allows you to wire together these beans in various ways so you, you can create your Java classes and you can sort of code them as, as beans, you can specify that they are beans and then you can use Spring to specify how those objects are going to interact with each other. So um, there's, a, there's a bunch of different technologies that are typically used together with Spring. Uh, the, the website bit of Spring is known as Spring MVC, Model View Controller, which is kind of a, a strange non-descriptive name. Um, the, the, the kind of downside of Spring, in a way, or one of the downsides, is that you have to learn a lot of Spring before you can get onto, a, onto making web programs. So uh, before I started making this course, I had the idea that um, it was really terrible that other courses spent a lot of time teaching you about basic Spring before going onto web applications. This is the typical structure of a string of a spring course and I wanted to make a course that started with the web stuff but unfortunately I realized it, it really wasn't possible because you really do need to know a lot about spring before you can get onto spring MVC. So in this course I go through uh, creating beans and I talk about what beans are and we use XML and annotations. Um, Auto wiring is something that lets, lets Spring kind of find the best matching beans for your particular need and there's, there's lots of other ways of wiring things together. With, with Spring, if you're not going to create a website, you, you, you might just use it for working with databases and that's, that's mainly because it supports Hibernate, it's really good for working with Hibernate. So you can use Spring with normal JDBC which is kind of the default way of connecting to databases in Java, but more typically we use Spring with Hibernate, which is this technology that allows you to basically do away with, um, with SQL. So if you write a JDBC program that connects to a database in Java with, with, with or without Spring, the problem is that you have all these SQL queries which may be buggy but you, you don't really know it, except by testing them and checking them. You can't really figure that out. Hibernate does away with that SQL, so you can just say to an object, um, I want to I wanna store this in the, in the database, or I want to get stuff from the database and map it to this object. So Hibernate does, um, does uh, object relational mapping, basically. And there are various other technologies as well, like Webflow, um, that are associated with Spring and I, I cover a bit in this course. So the, 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 whoops, the basic idea here is, is just that you've got a, a normal Java program but it, it's got these beans that represent objects and Spring specifies how to wire those beans together and Spring also gives you a load of other kind of Spring modules that enable you to do particular things particularly easy. For example, the task of submitting a form on a website and then storing that into a database. Spring is set up to make that easy to do. And if you want to create a website that manages users, that's, um, that's not so easy to do um, with just plain servlets and JSPs, which is what you might use 
to do Java web programming if you didn't use a framework. But Spring makes, makes that particularly easy to do. It lets you set up a, um, a system for managing users really easily. So um, Spring is, it, it can be used with various core Java web technologies, but probably most often it's used um, as a way of managing JSP, Java server pages. So in this course, I don't go into Java server pages, um, but I, I, I show you how to, how to basically code them, but I don't go into any detail with them because uh, that's a separate thing that you have to learn. But you can use Spring to organize those pages and to make um, the tasks that you normally do with those pages much easier. So it, it is easier once you've learned Spring. It's easier to create a website with Spring um, than without it. Uh, at least that's true if you're going to do a lot of stuff like submitting forms and, uh, and storing that stuff in databases. People um, often ask if you can create websites like uh, Facebook with Spring. And the answer is you can, but it, it's not ideal for that sort of thing. So I believe Facebook is written in PHP. And these websites that have things like um, instant messaging and, uh, and do all kinds of fancy things, they're very, very heavy on JavaScript, which runs in the, in the user's browser. Spring isn't about that. You can use those technologies with Spring but you may find that something like PHP gives you um, easier facilities for working with JavaScript type technologies. And what Spring is really for is for, for creating um, secure backends. So creating the, the part of your website that runs on the server, it's a server side technology and um, it enables you to, sec to fully secure your website and to give particular users with particular privileges, the right to do certain things on your site and to protect your site from people who don't have those privileges being able to do those things. So Spring MVC is, is perhaps most often used by um, things like utility companies and banks rather than social media sites, although you could use it to create a social media site. But more commonly, it's used for these really serious websites that have to be very secure. Um, okay, so that, that's, that's a basic introduction to Spring. As I say, it, it is just a bunch of jars that you download and those jars can then read um, XML or they can work with, um, with annotations like this. But um, because there are so many different jars, even for a basic Spring program, you, you find yourself going to a, several different websites to download all the jars and the versions of the jars have to match and so on. So for that reason, it's, it's common to use, for example, Maven, with Spring and um, I, I kind of introduce you a little bit to Maven in this course enough enough just to work with Spring. I, I don't understand uh, Maven well myself, I, uh, it's not something I've gone into but the great thing about it is that you can just add Maven support to your project um, in Eclipse let's say and you can use it to download jars and to download any other jars that those jars need automatically so Maven saves you a lot of time it saves you from going to a lot of different websites and it saves you not all but some of the stress of trying to figure out which versions of jars are compatible with each other so this this course is um, uses Eclipse you can uh, Eclipse is really great for uh, programming um, Spring applications, whether they're web, web applications or database or whatever. And you can download the, uh, the Spring IDE plugin for Eclipse, which gives you a lot of nice support for working with, uh, for example, XML files. So I'm not sure if I have this set up properly at the moment because I'm making this a long time after I actually created the course. But it gives you a, like a really nice interface so that you don't have to uh, edit the XML by hand. You can edit, edit, edit it all through a special interface. Uh, so the idea is you can download and, and install Eclipse and we'll go into that more in the next tutorial. And you can use that with some plugins to program Spring. If you want a version of Eclipse with all the plugins pre-installed, you can also use um, Spring Tool Suite. And this is STS. And this is, is just literally a version of Eclipse with all the plugins pre-installed, which, uh, which is a very nice thing to have. Um, I, I was a bit wary of it when I started 
this course because I hadn't used it before. But now I see that it really is just Eclipse with all the plugins pre-installed. So it's an easy way to get started with Spring. And it also provides you with some, um, some like template projects that let you um, that let you set up basic spring projects really quickly but in this course I'll show you how to do everything by hand just to um, just to get the best understanding of it uh, so um, if you're watching on YouTube I, this this is a big course I've made and I've uploaded I've uploaded the first like the initial videos to YouTube so that's enough to get started with spring the whole course is, is not free because this is how I make my living, but if you uh, want this course and you haven't got any spare cash, you can email me at john at caveofprogramming.com and I'll give you a free copy. If you do pay for it, I'm extremely grateful because it pays my rent. Okay, so in the, in the next tutorial, we'll look at um, setting, up your, um, setting up your system for spring development. We'll look at uh, what you have to download and install. Um, we'll work with Eclipse and various plugins. Uh, Tomcat and we'll use MySQL for our database and all of these things are free and um, I'll, I'll point you in the right direction towards setting them up although you may have to Google for specific setup instructions for your system. So until next time, happy coding!